Hey, sap sucker, what are you doing? All right, guys, it's March, uh, and March is maple syrup season. We got our cooker going. We're boiling some stuff down from last weekend. It is Thursday, although um, if you know any of my friends, they would say it's Friday for me because apparently I never work on Fridays. But uh, nonetheless, we're, we're cooking some syrup down and uh, wanted to kind of run through, if you're looking to save a little bit of time, wood and energy, building yourself a little RO. Um, work with a lot of ROs on the industrial side and uh, I have a lot of friends that have built them and we kind of put something together that is uh, pretty easy going and uh, definitely worth your your time if you want to get into maple syrup and you're doing say even five gallons a year it'll cut down your boiling time but uh, you get into the 10 I, I think last year we made 19 gallons of syrup it's definitely worth uh, worth your while so I'll run through how an RO works and basically break down the components of what you need to build one yourself. Uh, there's a lot of flexibility in it, uh, but at the end of the day, I'll, I'll put some screenshots of you know, Amazon or anything like that. Uh, certainly you can shop around, but give you the, the, the blueprint to build your own RO. So um, hopefully you can get out and, uh, and enjoy some of this great, uh, great maple syrup. All right, guys, we're going to run down uh, what we got going on here. In this blue drum here, um, we, we have all of our, basically our sap. Um, so we'll throw it in here. Right now I got the RO inside just because it's, it's warm today. The sap's running today, but it um, gets pretty cold at night and the RO will freeze up and, and won't really do you much good. So we have it inside our, uh, our meat shop here running it through basically I just got a weight on the bottom pulls it into the inlet of this pump and like I said we're gonna have a link to part numbers for this pump but basically this pressurizes the the liquid I run it through just a small little strainer um, I found this uh, I don't know I don't know where I, I found it but I'll I'll give you a link it's just kind of a large filter for any large pieces, sometimes you get little pieces of bark or or what have you in there, um, and that helps filter that out. But then you run through, basically I just used, got this off of Menards. Um, I think that's a five micron, looks like yarn, but it's a five micron filter. That helps pull out uh, some of the smaller uh, pieces that would damage the RO once you get to it. Um, so you go from the pump, you can bypass this if you want, but I got like a coarse filter and then a fine filter. And then from there, it's going into the RO. And so this is your inlet in. As it's going through, this is basically the, the inside of the RO coming out. And you have to have a throttle valve. So that's like a flow control valve, more or less. All that does is create some back pressure. And when you create enough back pressure here, you're gonna force the water through the RO and it's gonna come out through here. I'll show you. Um, I have a brand new one here. Um, this particular one is, I think 100, 100 gallon per day. But basically this is sitting in here like this. So that water's coming in through the top tube and it can easily go through that bottom tube, which is this line here. And by throttling it back, it's basically like, I don't know, you want to picture it like a, a toilet paper roll. And um, so basically by creating pressure here, you're forcing that water to, you know, come back through and basically come out the clean end. And I'll show you a couple of uh, demonstrations. We got hydrometers that basically will show you the percent uh, percent concentration of each, and we'll run through that here in a second. All right, a small little hydrometer. Uh, this is a sap hydrometer, and again, I'll I'll send a link on there. 
Um, certainly if there's any questions on anything on this RO, um, drop a comment, let me know, and I will definitely respond to it. But this is all our pure water. And so we'll fill up, uh, fill this up here and show you what we're looking at. On this hydrometer, not sure how well you'll be able to see this, but we'll let it stabilize out. You can see a, a zero on there. So basically it's showing us there's 0% sugar or what we have here is basically pure water. Um, all right, and our concentrate, we'll give it a little bit of a spin. So looking at that, we are maybe just a hair short of 4%. So we are going uh, basically from our raw sap, we'll test that here in a second, it's two or 3%, I'm sure. Uh, and we're bringing it up to 4%. What that's doing for us is basically cutting out a lot of water. If you start at 2%, that's 43 gallons to one to make one gallon of maple syrup. You jump it up from even two to 3%, might not seem like a big difference, um, but 3% I believe is like 28.6 gallons to one. So if you go from 2% to 3%, you're cutting out uh, you know, the better part of 10, 12, 14 gallons of water that you don't have to sit in an evaporator cook down, uh, which saves you a lot of time, saves you a lot of uh, money in wood uh, or costs in wood uh, per se. But um, what I found with these smaller ROs, you don't have a real big taste impact. You get some of the large industrial ROs and you go from two, 3% sugar to 12, 14%, then it can have a big taste impact because you're not cooking it as long. You don't get, you almost get like a smoky flavor into it. Um, so that can make a big difference in, in what you're doing. All right, we took this out of the sap bucket and looking at it again, it's hard to see. We're like 2.4%. So in our sap bucket, we're 2.4% right now and as the season goes on that seems to kind of drop down the percent sugar gets less and less typically you start out at maybe three percent and get down to two percent every tree is so different uh, the types of trees can make a huge difference but we're running that through pressurizing it running through the filter through the ro pure water out sugar on the other side and uh basically going from 2.4 percent you know up to up to almost five percent so we're cutting quite a bit of water out there which all right so that's pretty much running down our ro um just kind of a, a recap here again you pressurize it you run it through a filter you run it through your ro you need a good throttling valve and i'll leave a, a few links on that as far as places you can find them um one that i've used in the past too I think this one was like 30 bucks. It's a plastic one. That stainless metal one seems to seem to hold a, a better better control on it. But um, we'll also at some point go through how we filter our syrup. We have this really awesome filter uh, pan made by Smoky Lake Products. Uh, really awesome company, local to us. Uh, we live in central Wisconsin. They're right in Hilbert, uh, not too far away. All right, we picked up this cooler here. Um, we have the better part of uh, probably six, six and a half gallons of syrup to bottle this weekend. And uh, boy, this little filter, we'll, we'll run through how that works, but it, it works awesome as far as uh, having the time. Uh, we keep it heated underneath, but having the time to uh, bottle it and get it up to 180, 190 degrees so you're not gonna have any problems with bacteria. But uh, Hope you guys enjoyed uh, this quick lesson on how we built an RO, how it's helped us save a lot of uh, lot of time and, uh, and wood burning. But um, I will give you one last little disclaimer. The kids love uh, sucking on the sap there. It's a pretty good sugar taste. So uh, you, will lose, you will lose some sap on that. The kids will, will eat it up for sure. So, all right, good luck. Hey, Sapsucker, what are you doing?